When you kick a football at an angle, its motion may look like one smooth curve, but it's actually two separate motions happening at the same time. One is horizontal, the other is vertical. This is because velocity is a vector. It has both direction and magnitude. And when that direction is slanted, we can break it into parts. This is called resolving a vector. The velocity at launch can be split into two components, one along the horizontal axis, one along the vertical axis. We do this using basic trigonometry. If the ball is kicked with a speed u, and the angle of projection is theta from the ground, then the horizontal component of velocity is u times cosine theta. The vertical component of velocity is u times sine theta. From here, we treat the motion as two independent one-dimensional motions. Horizontally, the ball keeps moving at a constant speed. Vertically, it moves under gravity, going up, stopping for a moment, and coming back down. This separation helps us study the motion more easily. Now let's look at what happens during the vertical motion, the part of the velocity that pushes the ball upward. Right after the kick, gravity starts pulling it down. But since it was kicked upward with some vertical speed, it takes time before gravity can stop it. That upward speed is u times sine theta. As the ball rises, it slows down because gravity acts in the opposite direction. At the topmost point, its vertical speed becomes zero. That's the turning point. Then, it starts falling back, picking up speed again, this time downward. This entire up and down journey is governed by the same equation from one-dimensional motion. Final speed equals initial speed minus acceleration times time. Let's apply that to the upward motion. At the highest point, final vertical speed is zero. Initial vertical speed is u sine theta. Acceleration is g downward. So zero equals u sine theta minus g times t. Solving this, we get Time to reach the top is u sine theta divided by g. Since the time to go up and the time to come down are equal, total time of flight is two times u sine theta divided by g. This is the time the ball stays in the air. Now let's find the maximum height it reaches. We use another kinematic equation. Final speed squared equals initial speed squared minus two g h at the top. Final speed is zero. So zero equals u sine theta squared minus two g h. Solving for height gives maximum height equals u squared times sine squared theta divided by 2g. So just from understanding vertical motion, we've now got time of flight 2u sine theta by g, maximum height u squared sine squared theta by 2g. Now let's look at the horizontal motion. Here things are simpler. There's no acceleration because gravity only acts vertically. So the ball keeps moving forward at a constant horizontal speed. That speed is u cosine theta, the horizontal component of the launch velocity. And since it stays in the air for a total time of 2u sine theta by g, we can find the horizontal range, the total distance it travels before hitting the ground. Range is just speed multiplied by time. So range equals u cosine theta multiplied by total time of flight. Substitute the time of flight we derived earlier. That's u cosine theta times 2u sine theta divided by g multiply everything out, you get range equals u squared times sine of two theta divided by g. That's the standard formula for range in projectile motion. And notice the range depends on both the speed and the angle. Maximum range happens when sine of two theta is one, which means two theta is 90 degrees or theta is 45. That's why a 45 degree launch gives the farthest reach. So the next time you see a football curving across the field or a firework soaring into the night sky, you're actually watching a perfect slice of physics in action. Projectile motion isn't just about numbers, it's gravity drawing curves. It's math turning motion into something predictable, beautifully predictable. And what we just explored, it's just the beginning. If you're curious to go deeper into how the universe moves, you're in the right place. This is Physics Unparalleled. Hit that subscribe button and comment below. Until then, keep questioning the motion around you.